Uh, welcome to the second talk of the afternoon session. Uh, we are happy to have Poonata Ghoshal, uh, uh, who is the second speaker, and she would be uh, speaking about on parameterized lower bounds for multilinear models. Hi all, uh, thanks for the introduction, and thank you for giving me this opportunity to talk. So I'm going to talk on uh, parameterized lower bounds for multilinear uh, algebraic models. This is uh, joint work with Raghavendra Rao. Uh, from I, we are both from IIT Madras. So the outline of my talk is first I will motivate the problem and then speak about parameterized lower bounds and then I will present our results and conclude. So as a quick recap, arithmetic circuits are uh, directed acyclic graphs with uh, inputs formal variables and constants from the field. Uh, inner ga uh, the gates are uh, sum and product gates and the output uh, node computes a polynomial which is the polynomial computed by the circuit. So these are basically model of computation for polynomials. These represent polynomials in some way. And uh, the number of wires in this uh, circuit is the measure size. And the longest path from any leaf node to the output node is the depth. And the problem that we talk about in, uh, in our work is this lower bound problem, which asks, given a circuit class, Calix C, what is the minimum size required for any circuit in this class to compute some explicitly given hard polynomial? Now, some known lower bounds are as follows. So the best known lower bound for general circuits is super linear. The result was that. Uh, General arithmetic circuits need omega of n size to come up with this polynomial, which is the sum of d minus 1 powers of x size. And a bit more restricted lower bound was on monotone circuits over real numbers. So monotone circuits are circuits which uh, do not uh, take only non-negative uh, constants from the field. And these require uh, 2 to the omega n exponential size to compute permanent or determinant. This was given by Jerem and Snir. And uh, later, uh, Srikant showed that uh, uh, MVNP, like monotone version of VNP, is separate from monotone VP because there are these sequence of multilinear polynomials which, if monotone circuits are computing them, they require 2 to the omega n size. Another noted lower bound is this uh, on this depth four circuits where uh, product gate fan in is bounded by order root n. These circuits require sub exponential size two to the omega root n to compute permanent or determinant. This result was given by Gupta et al. So coming back to the title of the talk. One polynomial is enough. You the family of polynomials. Yeah. So uh, we consider the parameterized setting because this setting allows for finer analysis. So in this setting, we compute the complexity of any problem in terms of both the input size and an additional parameter. And because for the same problem, we can consider different parameters, it, uh, we can see it as a finer analysis of that problem. So in the classical setting, where uh, the notion of efficiency is polynomial in the input size, here the notion of efficiency is f of k times polynomial in the input size, where f is any arbitrary computable function. And this notion is known as fixed parameter tractable. Now, uh, parameterized uh, classes of arithmetic circuits have al already been considered by Engels in his thesis. But these uh, parameterized arithmetic circuit classes were all on some general parameter. But we are interested in the specific parameter that is degree of the, degree of the polynomial. So uh, this is mainly because there are uh, many combinatorial problems like uh, finding a k-length path in a graph or finding a spanning tree with exactly k leaves in a graph, or uh, the subgraph isomorphism uh, problem, where the input is two graphs, uh, G and H, 
and the task is to see if inside G there are subgraphs that are isomorphic to H. And all these combinatorial problems are reduced to detecting a multilinear monomial in a polynomial that is parameterized by the degree. And the main reason for that is these polynomials are uh, very easy to compute. They are all computable by FPT side circuit. So if we can uh, come up with some formulas computing these polynomials, which are parameterized by degree, that will improve the uh, space complexity of these algorithms. So this was the work of subgraph isomorphism, where the uh, problem of subgraph isomorphism was reduced to detecting a monomial in the homomorphism polynomial. And this was the k-length path problem. And this was a collection of problems which can be solved by detecting multilinear monomials. So uh, also that, uh, also the reason for considering multilinear models is because these, uh, the, pre the problems that we saw previously were detecting multilinear monomials. So multilinearity in some sense seems to be interesting, but the main motivation in considering multilinear mo models was that uh, if we take lower bounds on multilinear models in the classical setting, then, and we parameterize those polynomials, those uh, lower bounds don't translate to n to the omega k lower bounds. Like in the classical setting, exponential lower bound would be an interesting lower bound. Uh, in the parameterized setting, we can consider n to the omega k to be a good lower bound. And uh, if we parameterize the polynomial in, say, RAS, which uh, gave super polynomial lower bounds for multilinear formulas, then we are not getting into the omega k lower bound. So it seemed like an interesting question. This was more because we have worked with degree as parameter. So uh, we gave a polynomial, we defined a polynomial explicitly, which is of degree k, and it can be computed efficiently. It has FPT sized depth four circuits. So, uh, this was joint work with Om Prakash and Raghavendra Rao. And we can see that any, uh, so this uh, depth four circuit is such that every product gate fan in will be bounded by K because the polynomial is of degree K. Now by using Fisher's identity, we will get an equivalent sigma power, sigma power, uh, sigma, like this depth five powering circuit for, from this depth four circuit. But uh, using Fisher, Fisher's identity, the depth five circuit we get there the power gate fan in is the same as the product gate fan in here. So that the equivalent depth five powering circuit that we will get will have power gate uh, fan in bounded by K. But if we restrict this, the top uh, power gate fan in to little low of K, we get a lower bound against P of n to the omega K size. So we can see that inside the class of depth four FPT size circuits, raised by degree, the depth four circuits where the top product gate fan in is bounded by little of k are not as powerful as depth four circuits in general. So the depth, against elementary symmetric polynomial. Yeah, okay. This, uh, this polynomial was some uh, uh, product of uh, bilinear terms uh, in the, uh, yeah, sum of product of bilinear terms like that. Yeah, but this polynomial gave us the insight that uh, this top gate fan in can be important. Yeah, we also obtained the same lower bound against elementary symmetric polynomials of degree k. And we also showed a lower bound uh, of depth three uh, circuits of degree k against that same polynomial. 
So the degree as parameter seemed interesting in general. Now, now the general way to prove lower bounds is that if we have uh, some polynomial P, which is a sum of say uh, P1, P2, 2, Ps, and if we have a complexity measure which gives some positive uh, real value for every polynomial, we can upper bound the measure for this polynomial by the sum of the measure for individual building block polynomials. And that can be bounded by S times the maximum measure for any of these individual PIs. So we get, an, get a lower bound for S, which is the measure for P divided by the maximum measure over any of these PIs. In our case, the measure uh, consider is uh, rank of the coefficient matrix. So uh, how will we con uh, construct this matrix? We, we consider any multilinear polynomial f and we divide its set of variables x into two parts y and z. And uh, so the any monomial in f will look like product of a monomial whose support is in y and, product, and uh, a monomial whose support is in z. So if we construct the matrix in such a way that the columns are indexed by uh, monomials in z and rows are indexed by monomials in y, then corresponding to mi and sj, we have coefficient of the monomial mi sj in f. So we say that the rank of this matrix is the measure of hardness that we use in our work. This uh, measure was defined by RAS. So as an example, we take this polynomial where we divide the set of variables uh, x1, x2, x3, x4 into y which contains x1 and x4 z which contains x2 and x3 and we construct this matrix where uh, columns are monomials in z and uh, rows are monomials in y and corresponding to any monomial in the polynomial say x1, x2 we can see the entry is 2 which is the coefficient here. I have omitted some rows and columns which were all 0. So this uh, matrix has first and third rows same and the second row is the multiple of the fourth row. So this has rank. Now uh, this rank of coefficient matrix is subadditive and submultiplicative. So it is uh, easy to see that uh, it is subadditive. So when uh, f is the sum of uh, two dis uh, variable disjoint polynomials, then this equality holds because the monomials indexing the columns here will not uh, index the uh, columns of the coefficient matrix of H. So coefficient matrix of G and H occur as uh, disjoint submatrices in the coefficient matrix of F. So therefore the rank of the coefficient matrix is some of the ranks of this matrix and this matrix. It is also submultiplicative but we will omit the proof. We also observed that for any multilinear uh, polynomial of degree k, the rank of the coefficient might always be bounded by k times uh, n by 2 choose k by 2 for any partition of the variables. So in our context, full rank will, uh, a full rank polynomial will be having rank n to the uh, k by 2 divided by some function of k. So using rank, the lower bound approach will be to say that the rank of the hard polynomial will be bounded by S times the maximum of rank of any of these PIs, where the maximum is over all partitions and all I's. So our result is this, uh, we, have, we construct this parameterized polynomial family which uh, is of degree 2k, so the rank is uh, n omega of n to the k divided by some function of k, so we obtain a full rank polynomial family. So using this uh, rank lower bound, we can show that uh, any read algebraic branching program computing this, uh, also of degree k, computing this polynomial family uh, as size uh, omega of n to the k by some function of k. Now the 
uh, rest of the talk is to construct this uh, high rank polynomial and to show the lower bound. So for constructing this high rank polynomial, our, uh, we will first look at a different polynomial. So we consider this uh, polynomial which is a uh, product of k by 2 bilinear terms. Each bilinear term is uh, uh, of the form sum of some um, multilinear degree 2 terms. And we can see that if we send each xij to y and each wij to z, we obtain n by k rank of this bilinear term. And hence, the total rank will be n to the k by 2 by k to the k by 2, which is full rank. But there are many other partitions for which this is low rank because if we take xij and wij for i odd and put them in y and for i even we put them in z, then we will have very low rank for this polynomial. So uh, this polynomial is not useful, but from this, when we looked at this, we felt like this looked like if we have a graph over 2n vertices and we have a perfect matching in that graph and we have divided that perfect matching into k by 2 uh, bags and each bag has n by k edges. So we felt like perfect matchings can be useful in uh, defining our hard polynomial. For that, we consider the complete graph on 2k vertices. Now in this uh, graph, for each uh, edge, we define a polynomial pij. And the final polynomial we define in this way, that f is uh, sum over all per, uh, per perfect matchings in this uh, k2k, uh, this formal variable times this matching polynomial, which is basically 1 plus uh, product of 1 plus edge polynomial for every edge in this perfect matching. And uh, we will show that we can set, uh, that, so there will be some matching perfect, some good perfect matching m in this family of perfect matchings, so that we can set this uh, formal variable am1 for that particular uh, matching m and 0 for all others. We claim that this matching polynomial is of uh, full rank into the k by some function of uh, k. And uh, now we will focus on proving this statement. Yeah. The yeah, so it has now uh, 2k variables, uh, to, uh, like it has 2k vertices, but each uh, vertex is basically a bag of n by 2k variables. And uh, using that, we will define the edge polynomial. So for each vertex, uh, we have this bag of variables, xi2, xi plus n by 2k minus 1, basically n by 2k variables where we define some sort of ordering that if a is less than or equal to b, then xa is lower in the order than xb. And so our edge polynomial, which considers uh, variables in vi uh, united with variables in vj, that is defined on n by k ordered variables. And it looks like an interval. So we, our, we define our uh, edge polynomial as this some formal variable omega a b times x a x b where a is less than b and uh, this uh, notion of having an interval came from the Raj Yehud polynomial. So to prove that each edge polynomial will uh, have some rank lower bound, we uh, introduce this notion called imbalance which is basically the number of variables that phi sends uh, to y, which is more than the halfway mark n by 2k in this set. And we say that, uh, so because phi is an equipartition, we will be happy if an edge has equal number of variables in y and z. But uh, so if it has a bit more than uh, half number of variables in y, we call that positive imbalance L. If number of variables that are mapped to Z are more than half, then uh, that is negative imbalance L. And we will show that this uh, polynomial uh, Pij 
has rank omega of n by 2k minus absolute value of the imbalance. So basically we want the imbalance to be as low as possible on every edge so that the matching polynomial which is product of 1 plus p x for every edge has high rank. It is, uh, so this is the proof for the rank lower bound. So for if, uh, if xa and xb are both mapped to z, then they will have an entry uh, omega, uh, omega a b in, uh, in only this row. And if uh, x x b are both mapped to y, then they will have an entry only in this column. So together the degree two uh, monomials in this polynomial can contribute only a maximum of rank two. So this uh, submatrix which uh, the indices are the single variables, they have entries uh, uh, which are the coefficients of y i x z j that are only omega y j. So this submatrix uh, here it's the entries are all formal variables. So if we can assign values such that this submatrix is a full rank, we are done. This submatrix can have dimension which is the minimum of n by 2k plus l and n by 2k minus l. So which is basically n by 2k minus the absolute value of the imbalance and that is the rank lower bound. Now uh, to show that uh, we know the rank lower bound for pijs, how will we balance this uh, absolute value of imbalance for every edge so that we get a uh, matching for which the polynomial will be full rank. So we define, a, uh, so the matching polynomial is this product of 1 plus pij and if we fix a partition and we take any arbitrary matching m, we define uh, bad edges in that matching such that by eliminating bad edges from that matching iteratively, we can construct a good matching n for which the matching polynomial is a full rank. So for this purpose, we define the absolute value of imbalance on every edge as the weight of that edge. And these bad edges have weight above this particular threshold, which is n by 2k minus n by 2k square, something like that. Now it is, uh, from our rank lower bound, uh, if m has no bad edges, then all edges will have this rank n by 2k minus the threshold because this is the upper bound on the weight. And therefore, this will be the rank n by some function of k. And because we have k edges, the total rank of the polynomial will be n to the k by some function of k, which is full rank. So if there are, if there is uh, like more than one bad edge, we pick one particular bad edge, which has uh, say maximum value. And we show that there will be some good edge with which we can swap the end point so that matching with this new, uh, so if the bad edge is ij and the new edge is i prime j prime, if, uh, so then matching with the edges i i prime j j prime or the matching with the edges i j prime j i prime will be a better, a better matching than m. We will have removed one bad edge ij. If we continue this process, then we can have a good matching. So for that we uh, uh, define imbalance on the individual uh, variable sets. That is uh, the number of uh, variables uh, in vi which are mapped to y minus n by 4k. And this uh, value dvi will, this will take minimum value minus n by 4k when all variables are sent to z. So this is 0 and this is minus n by 4k. This will have value n by 4k, which is the maximum if all variables are sent to y. This is n by 2k. So minus n by 4k, the maximum value will be n by 4k. So uh, weight of the edge is the absolute value of the imbalance on the edge, which is the sum of the individual imbalances. So when we are taking uh, this sum, which uh, multiply, uh, which is uh, 
basically sum of the imbalances over all the edges in the perfect matching. We are actually summing all the individual imbalances dvi and because phi is an equipartition uh, all the imbalances over the variable bags will ultimately sum to zero because ultimately over all the uh, variables half goes to y and half goes to z using this equation and using the fact that the, uh, e is a bad edge where weight uh, exceeds the threshold we can uh, say that by averaging this um, minus t by uh, k minus 1 will be the upper bound on some edge. There will be some edge with this uh, uh, sign times weight on it. This is uh, important because this edge E1 which we show exists by averaging is the one with which we will swap endpoints to get a better matching. So if we define uh, dvi to be a, dvj to be uh, b and same for, for the other edge we take vi1 to be c and vj1 to be d and we know that, uh, that the edge with imbalances dvi and dvj are, uh, is the bad edge. We see that uh, an edge will be having maximum weight if both the imbalances are of the same sign. So absolute value of a plus will b will be uh, greatest when both A and B are positive or both A and B are negative. So without loss of generality we consider when both A and B are positive. In that case uh, and we know that C plus D is negative. So in uh, we have either both C D are negative or one of them is negative. If both are negative then this sum of uh, absolute values will be we can see that swapping endpoints with E1 is zero. I have some diagram for this. If we represent uh, E and E1 in this way, these triangles are A, B, these uh, white triangles are C, D. We see that this uh, edge is colored more than half of the area of the square and this is colored less than the half. And like the square to be colored exactly half. So when we swap endpoints and we take upper half of this with lower half of this, we take a more or less, we get more or less half colored square and same when we take this upper half and this lower half. So we have more balanced edges and we have eliminated that, uh, uh, we have eliminated this uh, very high weight edge. We are, uh, but the second case is when one of them is uh, positive. So we show that even if uh, C is positive, because C plus D was negative, uh, D has to be uh, much uh, larger this time. But even when C is positive and we swap endpoints, it still uh, this uh, these squares are still more uh, balanced in coloring than this this particular square which was highly colored. So this is the analysis that follows that uh, we already have by this value which we got by averaging and D can only be greater than minus n by 4k by definition. So using that we can bound C by this value. And if C is we, uh, greater than both A and B, then we will have this inequality. A plus B is bounded by 2 times C. And this is a contradiction because we have a lower bound on A plus B. A plus B was greater than the threshold. And this threshold value is because there is this minus n by 2k times k minus 1 term here. And it is a minus n by k times k minus 1 here. This lower bound is higher than the upper bound and that cannot happen, so we, we will be able to swap endpoints. So that is how we will get the good matching because this swapping will happen only finite number of times. So we will get a good matching for which our polynomial will be of full rank. Now for, uh, yeah, for to 
point out the exact uh, matching that will be preferred. We can see either A will, uh, because C cannot be greater than both A and B, either C will be greater than B, so A will be greater than C in that case, and this edge pairing B and C will be better than the edge that paired A and B. And otherwise, the edge pairing A and C will be better than the edge pairing A and B. So for the lower bound, uh, we any ordering of the variables, and uh, we consider a partition that puts uh, uh, variables on the layers 1 n by 2 into one part and the rest of the variables in a different part. And this rank, uh, rank of the coefficient matrix of the uh, uh, polynomial computed by the ROVP in this partition is bound, bounded by the width of the n by 2th layer. So we know that width is bounded by the size s. And we already have rank lower bound for the polynomial it is computing. So we can say that the size s will be uh, lower bounded by n to the k by function of k. Some more results we uh, showed that uh, the lower, uh, we also have a lower bound against another model called uh, strict interval ABPs. And uh, it is, uh, Surprising to see that this full rank polynomial is of uh, depth 4 and com can be computed by an FPT size circuit, though it gives uh, lower bounds in, uh, for multilinear models. And we also construct another hard polynomial, uh, another polynomial of high rank H, which is sum of three read ones polynomials. This was motivated by uh, Kyle Nair and Saha's uh, work. and. This polynomial H uh, achieves a similar rank, but it is n to the omega c k, where that, uh, there is some constant factor in the exponent. So this is all. n to the omega k. Depth 5 powering circuits where the top powering gate has fan in bounded by little of k. Yeah. 